From powering self-driving cars at companies like Waymo, Cruise, and Tesla, to beating up on professionals in some of the world's most challenging games, ranging from Go to StarCraft II, machine learning is making its way into software applications across every industry. Used properly, machine learning can provide compelling advantages over more traditional applications, but these advantages come at a cost. In 2015, a group of researchers from Google released a paper titled Hidden Technical Debt in Machine Learning Systems. In this video, I'll be highlighting the key points from that paper and providing some easy to understand examples along the way. If you're new here, consider subscribing and check out all of the DevOps and cloud infrastructure content on this channel, as well as at devopsdirective.com. If you want to check out the original paper, and I suggest that you do, I've included a link in the description below. Without further ado, let's get into it. If you're not familiar with the term technical debt, it is a metaphor used in software engineering to describe the effect making a particular design choice will have in terms of generating future work. For example, to meet a critical deadline, you might implement a quick and brittle solution knowing full well that in the future, you will need to replace that solution or refactor it into a more robust implementation. The paper lays out a variety of reasons that machine learning systems incur more technical debt than their traditional software system counterparts, and I'm going to highlight the top few. Reason number one, complex models erode boundaries. What does this mean? When writing software, it is best practice to isolate different portions of the code base from each other. For example, let's imagine we are operating an e-commerce website named Schmamazon. We might have one module associated with containing the user accounts and another related to handling the shopping cart and its functionality. If those modules are isolated, it enables them to be worked on simultaneously by different people or teams without having any issues. But because Schmamazon is a leading technology company, we want to start working on building a machine learning product recommender system to boost sales. There are lots of signals, input signals, we could use to collect and feed into this model, including information about the user account, such as age, gender, address, etc., and information from the shopping cart, history of the items that were added and removed and when, and boom, just like that, we've started to break down that strong isolation between the two different modules from earlier. Also, future models are likely going to depend on many of the same signals, leading to a web of dependencies in which changing any one subsystem now ripples out to impact many others. This data dependency web leads into the second driver for hidden technical debt of machine learning systems, and that is that data dependencies cost more than code dependencies. Let's examine a few of those data dependencies within the context of our hypothetical product recommendation system. The first input signal might be statistics about the entire user base of the website and their behavior in terms of which products they look at and which products they end up buying. The second input signal might be the output of another machine learning model that is predicting whether or not this particular user is a voracious reader or not. A third signal might be the product identifier or ID which encodes things like the product category, including whether or not the product is a book or a clothing item or maybe an electronic item. However, because software changes over time, that product ID system may have changed recently, so we could even have a fourth input corresponding to that new product ID, whereas the first one is the legacy product ID. Now how do these signals represent potential sources of technical debt? Let's imagine a few cases. That upstream machine learning model might be updated, modifying the input signal. The general user base of the site might drift over time as the marketing emphasis shifts from book sales to one more focused on clothing and or electronics. Or that legacy product ID system might be shut off entirely, breaking our model completely. These changes would at a minimum warrant retraining of our product recommendation engine to avoid decreasing accuracy, but might even require rewriting the entire model to adapt to a change in an upstream dependency. In traditional software, there are static code analysis tools that are built specifically to examine dependency graphs, and those can help to identify and triage related issues. This type of tooling is much less widespread for data dependencies as described here. 
In addition to the coupling and data-related challenges described so far, there are also some design anti-patterns that are common in machine learning systems and can lead to incurring a lot of technical debt. One such pattern is the use of excessive glue code. Oftentimes, the core machine learning algorithms are implemented as general-purpose, self-contained packages. While this may seem like a good idea, because people can reuse those implementations, the amount of code that is required to wrangle the input and output data into the right formats can significantly outweigh the code of the algorithm itself. This mismatch can slow down development and make tweaks to the algorithm challenging. Also, because of the experimental nature of machine learning system development, it can be tempting to perform experiments using branching or conditional code paths. The cost of each of these individual experiments is low, but over time, if they accumulate, they can become a nightmare to maintain and slow the pace of progress of the entire system. So, at this point, should we just give up on machine learning in favor of writing traditional software? Of course not. While machine learning systems can incur hidden technical debt, there are some ways that we can start to address the highlighted challenges. The first technique is monitoring. Setting up automated monitors that will fire alerts when things go awry can be a first line of defense in identifying problems. For example, we can track the distribution of the predicted labels and compare that to the distribution of observed labels to identify potential prediction biases in our models and how those might change over time. Another technique is to start tracking specific versions of our data as well as metadata associated to the model, such as the hyperparameters used for training. Doing this can greatly improve reproducibility of the model training process and make it faster to track down issues should they occur. Also, there are a number of tools that are being developed that can help address certain pain points from across the machine learning engineering lifecycle. These include products like weights and biases for experiment management, MLflow for model management, or Kubeflow for entire lifecycle support. Are you using machine learning in your work? If so, how do you manage the related technical debt? Leave a comment below describing challenges that you've encountered and or solutions that you've come up with so that we can discuss them in the comment section and help each other out. If you've enjoyed this style of content, give the video a thumbs up so that I know to produce more like it in the future. That's it for today, and remember, just keep building.